Welcome to Celestial Insights, a weekly podcast that brings the stars down to earth. I'm your host, astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks. My purpose is to provide practical, unique, and insightful guidance to help you navigate the energies of the week like a boss. Hello, this is Celeste of Astrology by Celeste, and on this episode, I will discuss the astrology of the week of May 22nd. The theme of this week is the deep. So last week, we had a big lunar eclipse in Scorpio, which essentially is a full moon times 10. So I hope over the last week, something was illuminated to you about your relationship with your resources, power, or pleasure. So topics that may have surfaced could have to do with money, self-worth, power, intimacy, jealousy, possessiveness. I want you to remember that pressure makes the diamond. So the challenges that we face and how we move through them really speaks to our growth in this lifetime. A lot of people who are very successful have a lot of squares and opposition. These are tense aspects. So it's that tension, that pressure when people come up against it again and again, that often is what leads them to break through barriers rather than break down. So that's just some food for thought. There are three big things I want you to think about this week. Number one is that we are having a last quarter moon in the sign of Pisces today on Sunday at 11.42 a.m. Now, a last quarter moon is a time of wrapping things up. Lessons have been learned and we're ready to let go. It's the last major aspect of the moon cycle. We're ready to let go of things and start something new. And Pisces energy always has a sense of endings anyway. One of the reasons I feel like this last quarter moon is so important is that people can be very emotional reactive at this last quarter moon. The last aspect the moon makes before it changes into the sign of Aries, initiating a new cycle, is the moon will be conjunct Mars. So people can be acting. Mars is a planet of action out of emotion. The moon rules emotion. And I think with eclipse season, emotions will be very heightened and people will be remembering a lot about what has been lost for several reasons. Number one, Mercury is retrograde. And number two is the larger gestational cycle of this last quarter moon. There are these 27 month cycles with the moon phase where we have a new moon, first quarter moon, full moon, and last quarter moon at approximately the same degree of the zodiac, activating your chart in the same area. So this last quarter moon, the sun and moon will both be at one degrees. The sun at one degrees Gemini, the moon at one degrees Pisces. Now this relates back to a new moon on February 23rd of 2020 when there was a new moon at four degrees of Pisces. And this essentially was the last new moon before COVID started. I remember I was on a cruise in Tahiti having a wonderful time, but aware that something was going on. I remember we talked about maybe even not taking the trip because we were concerned about, you know, COVID, which had just started getting prominence in the news and causing some of the shutdowns and travel delays, but we went and are so glad we did and had an absolutely wonderful time. So there may be some sense of nostalgia about how life was before everything changed. The first quarter moon of the cycle was at zero degrees of Pisces on November 21st, 2020. So the sun would have been in Sagittarius and the moon in Pisces. So that was the first Thanksgiving, which is an important holiday in America, where people come together with their families to celebrate 
And for a lot of people, plans changed. They couldn't get together, especially with their older relatives, grandparents, and what have you, because of the eclipse. I remember for myself, Thanksgiving was spent outside. I live in California, so the weather was really nice. And it was so different and alien than anything before. So this could be something that kind of surfaces over this next coming week. Now, the full moon was at 29 degrees of Aquarius, so the sign that came before, and that was on August 22nd of 2021, and this was a time where, at that time, the sun was in Leo, the moon at 29 Aquarius, so right next door to zero Pisces, where there was a lot about how people were responsible to the collective versus having the ability to do what they want for themselves. There was a lot in the news about the vaccine and vaccines mandates started occurring and people fighting against them and what have you. So that was an interesting juxtaposition. Sometimes these moon phases slip to a different sign when they're really close to a sign boundary. And here we are at the last quarter moon in Pisces, where we feel like at one degrees Pisces, This story of COVID is starting to end. People are going back to normal life and have been for a while, but there is still this intensity around the issue and around like variants popping up and things like that. So just think about those dates and see if they activated your chart. For myself, the full moon was right before my sweet little pug, Sweet Pea, passed away. So yeah, this is a bittersweet for me. Some really happy memories, but some sadness as well, remembering what was lost. The second thing I want to talk about around this last quarter moon is a couple of the aspects relating to mythology. Number one, the sun, which is a spotlight And Mercury, how we think and communicate, are both on the fixed star Alcyone, which is one of the fates. So a positive thing about this fixed star is one can be insightful and brilliant, but there is a struggle with the dark side of human nature. We may hear news this week about a ruthless entrepreneur or a persuasive order perhaps more about the unfolding story, which has a Mercury retrograde essence of Elon Musk. Will he or won't he purchase Twitter? He's going back and forth with this. So yeah, we may see some more about that. Alcyone is also linked to the fates and the judgment of the dead. And unfortunately, at the lunar eclipse the day before an 18-year-old in New York drove hundreds of miles to a predominantly black area to shoot 10 people. He shot and killed 10 people at a supermarket store. This was a white supremacist motivated murder. I talked about it on my Instagram Live on May 15th. You can check my wall if you're interested in more about the astrology of that event. It was very related to the lunar eclipse. And we will be learning more and more about his family, his home life, and all these sorts of things in the coming week. So I wonder if Alcyone will be tied into that story as well. Now, Mercury is conjunct Sisyphus at this last quarter moon. And Sisyphus, I've always very related to the myth of Sisyphus. Sisyphus was a titan who cheated death twice. So he was punished by Zeus and had to push a rock up a hill for eternity. So what would happen was Sisyphus would push the rock up to the top of the hill. And as soon as he got to the top of the hill, it would roll back down to the bottom. And then he'd have to do this again. So he was a trickster. He was a master thief. It's interesting that this asteroid is conjunct Mercury retrograde at this time. So see if there are any stories in the collective or your own life, or have you felt like you're just constantly pushing a boulder uphill and it rolling back down? It's just a good time to take some stock, take some note of that. And lastly, this week, Mars enters the sign of Aries, where it is at home. Mars, the planet of action, of drive. 
is in its home sign of Aries, a fire sign where there is this pioneering spirit to just go after what you want. Mars is very primal about going after what we want without regard for anything, just having, you know, this focus. Yeah. And with the spotlight on Alcyone, which also can help us tap into our intuition, I think this can be a great opportunity for people to get clear about how they want to take action. Mars and Pisces, Mars does not like to be in water. And there was that interaction with Neptune. So a lot of people, myself at times included, felt like, you know, which way to go? Are our actions having results? There was a feeling of certain futility around some things. So now this should give us a zip, a bit of get up and go to get ready to charge and move forward. So on Sunday, the word of the day is emotional. The moon enters Pisces at 8.49 a.m. It's the last aspect before changing the sign is the conjunction to Mars, as I already mentioned. So we're going to watch out for acting out of emotion. There's that last quarter moon. And an aspect that I like is that Mars in Pisces on this day is sextile Pluto and Capricorn. So Mars and Pluto are closely related. They both rule Scorpio. Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. And so, yeah, you can start to like feel, you may start to feel this stirring of how you want to take action, but maybe wait before making any big moves until Mars goes into Aries. This is a great time to connect into your emotions and, you know, try to get some grounding. Mercury retrograde re-enters the sign of Taurus as well. So, There may be a shift in how you're thinking. What you're thinking about may be more concerned with resources and things. On Monday, the word of the day is collaboration. So the sun in Gemini is sextile Jupiter at two degrees of Aries. So this is a great day for focusing on the vision Thinking big, having some new ideas. This is a wonderful way to start the week. The sun is warmth and life and Jupiter is abundance and the greater benefic. So you may find yourself, especially if you felt a little down on Sunday, you may wake up feeling a lot brighter and happier on Monday. Now, Mercury retrograde this day is sextile Mars at 29 degrees of Pisces. So in the world, there may be more news about financial loss. The market may start with a big drop on this Monday. So we'll see. Also, just beware, you know, as you're enjoying your day at work and feeling that warmth of the sun and Jupiter, I would encourage you not to say anything to any of your colleagues that you wouldn't want printed in the newspaper because, Gossip could lead to being revealed, things being revealed with Mercury retrograde. Your words could come back to hurt you. So just like speak with integrity and watch out for anyone around you trying to cause confusion with what they're saying. Yeah, ask for clarification if needed. So on Tuesday, the word of the day is discipline. Venus in Aries is sextile Saturn in Aquarius, both at 25 degrees. I like this aspect because sextiles are soft aspects. They offer opportunities. Whistle while you work is something I was thinking about this. So enjoying your work is a great thing to think about this day. And you may be able to close a deal or have some kind of success from something you've been working on for quite a while. That's what I see with this Venus in Aries, sextiling Saturn. On this day, the moon enters Aries at 2.39 p.m. Pacific time. So an Aries moon, it's a fire moon. You may feel like this burst of energy or just optimism or just like feeling this life-giving force. We go from the moon goes from the last sign in the zodiac of Pisces to the first sign of Aries, from water to fire. Yeah, see if you notice a shift. I love an Aries moon. I have this moon natally, and it just is a great time to move your body and have some passion and feelings of independence and forward motion. 
Now, Mars enters Aries two hours later, and Mars is at home in Aries. So you may feel more action-oriented. Tuesdays every week, Tuesday is Mars Day. Yeah, this is a great day to, like, especially later in the day, to just get stuff done. Have the discipline to do the work. The word of the day on Wednesday is confidence. I'm thinking, like, the Rocky theme. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. It's the first full day of Mars and Aries. Now, Mercury retrograde is trining Pluto retrograde, both at 28 degrees. Mercury's back in Taurus, Pluto's in Capricorn. Just some thoughts over this with all that Martian energy and Pluto being activated. Don't be ruthless. Just take care to, you know, go for what you want, but consider others. Venus in Aries is semi-square Juno in Pisces, the asteroid of marriage. This is a stressful aspect, so don't start fights with people. Don't, especially not starting a fight with the one you love. This is some breakup energy because tomorrow Mars will semi-square Uranus. So Wednesday night, don't start a fight. Thursday, the word of the day is tug of war. The moon, Venus, Mars, and Aries all at some point square Pluto. So watch other people's actions and see if their power struggles. Watch yourself. See if you're feeling extra feisty. Yeah, there could also be additional bad news with the Venus and Aries squaring Pluto retrograde. For the U.S. especially, Pluto is in the second house of resources. On this day, the moon enters Taurus at 11.22 p.m. And this is a balsamic moon, so slow down and release. This is the last phase of the moon cycle. Balsamic moons are always times of releasing, letting things go before we start anew with a new moon. On Friday, the word of the day is relax. The sky is quiet. Nothing's going on. Friday's Venus's day. Yeah, just see if you can have a really nice day where you take it easy, get your stuff done at work, wrap things up, enjoy Friday night, take it slow. On Saturday, the word of the day is enjoyment. We wake up to a Taurus moon. Taurus moons are wonderful. Taurus is an earth sign. It gives us emotional body, this emotional grounding to the moon, the emotional body. Venus also enters Taurus. Venus is at home in Taurus and the moon is exalted in Taurus. So yeah, this is a great day to enjoy sensual pleasures. Mars will conjunct Jupiter and Aries, so you can like really be feeling like a sense of excitement and enthusiasm and fun. Don't use the Aries energy for arguing. Use it for passion. So that's it for this week's episode. Feel free to email me at celeste at astrologybyceleste.com with any astrology and action stories about this week, about the last quarter moon, about the shifting energy, about Mars and Aries or Venus going into Taurus, both in their home signs. Yeah, you can let me know how the daily themes are playing out for you. So take care and I'll catch you next week. Thank you for listening to Celestial Insights. To learn more about my work, please visit my website, astrologybyceleste.com, where I offer personal readings, horary consultations, cosmic coaching, group events, and classes to help guide people to higher levels of fulfillment. You can also find me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook at Astrology by Celeste. If you enjoyed Celestial Insights, please help others find the show. Follow, rate it five stars, or write a nice review. I would so appreciate it. I'm astrologer, coach, and intuitive Celeste Brooks, and I'll be back next week. 